Well, hey there, and welcome to my channel. I am Sarah McDowell. I'm a social navigator. I'm a public speaker. And I am a treasure seeker. I absolutely love thrifting, finding old things, new homes. So sit back, enjoy the show, and hey, if you would, subscribe and like this video. Hey, everyone. So good to be back. I've been incognito for a few weeks as you all know, I bought a flip house, hashtag my biggest flip. We had the appraiser come out on Tuesday and we do have a contract on it. And so hopefully this is this weekend will be the last weekend that I have to go out and get things done. Today we're going to do kind of a mashup. Sorry for that. My laptop is here and people are trying to contact me apparently. Anyway, we're going to do a mashup of things today. I'm going to show you some recent items that I got from a haul. We have some Goodwill blue boxes coming up. Hopefully I will be able to do those for the next couple of days and get them out in a timely manner before I leave. And then I need to go back out to a thrift store I was at where I found something rather pricey, worth valuable, rather valuable, and I want to go out and see if they have any more of the collection there. So let's get started, shall we? Okay. To our mugs here, I hope. Uh, the first mug that I have is, I picked this up, I was talking to my daughter on uh, a video chat while I was in the store. I did have my headphones on so no one else could really hear both sides of it. And she saw this and she's like, I must have it. Yeah. Bite me on the bottom. So this is now hers. Great Jaws themed mug. It is a mug. So you just... Well, I mean, I guess you could have it as a planter, too, but, I mean, who doesn't want to drink from a, a shark mug, right? All right, sticking to mugs, this is from England, and it depicts a science center, although I cannot remember exactly what it says. Let's take a look. Marland? Yeah, Marland, I believe is what it says, Science Center. I really liked the look of this. I think it is probably vintage. It's got some wear on it, but I love this kind of concrete finish look with the gray. Just a really nice looking mug. I like it. You got some boats here, so it looks like it's on the waterfront. Just a really cool looking mug. All right, next up, we have this ginormous Starbucks mug, Philadelphia. You have lots of different scenes from the City of Brotherly Love, the Love Statue. We've got the Liberty Bell, probably, um, I don't know, this looks like some type of a revival architecture. It probably has something to do with uh, government. Uh, you would think as many times as I've been there, I might recognize it, but I don't. And then this is just a, a cityscape scene. This is part of the Barista series from 2003. And it, like I said, it's humongous. I would say that it holds at least 14 to 16 ounces, is my guess. Yeah, nice piece. Okay, uh, sticking to ceramics type pieces. I am actually going back to the thrift store where I found this today. This is actually an old Sprouter Nantucket piece. The old Sprouter whale plates, they're very whimsical looking. They go for each 10 inch plates, 160 to 200 dollars a piece. So I'm going back to see if I can find more of these pieces and maybe even if this had a lid if that's there. I really don't know how much I'm going to get from this. 
uh, prices on these are very good if you know what you have. And this looks like to be a thistle themed piece. And it, again, it is signed Old Spouter on the bottom. Old Spouter Nantucket. Let's see if I can get it to where you can see it. There you go. Okay. Next up is this owl mug, appropriately named for the owl face look that it has, which is actually the handle. I found two black ones and two white ones. They were a dollar each. There is a maker of these. I think these are contemporary pieces and but there are some that were made from a designer that can go, that can fetch a really nice penny or two. But these just come, I really like the look out of them. Even if I just keep them, I'm going to be happy with that. But I suspect these will sell. All right, moving away from mugs and bowls, we're going to move to this little planter here. I picked this up. It, it does appear to be quite old. It has peonies. This is a peony bloom. This is a peony that is bloomed. On the bottom, though, it has this very interesting mark. 53274, I believe, is what it is. And I cannot find anything about it. But it is a quite lovely planter that does appear, like I said, to be old. It does have some significant crazing and... Um, on the inside. Now, I don't see a lot of crazing on the outside, which is good for some people, but it does have, looks like a very small hairline fracture or crack, for lack of a better word, but I don't think that's really going to hurt it a lot because it does appear to be quite old. The, the crack itself appears to be quite old. Uh, yeah, I don't really know that much about this piece yet. It does appear to have some kind of sick, sticky stuff that's leaving residue on my antique desk. So we're going to put it back here where it can stay out of trouble. All right. I don't know if you guys have heard me talk about restaurant wear yet, but this is um, Syracuse China restaurant wear. And these are coveted because of their durability. They're heavy, but not super heavy, uh, and they just have a lot of wear to them. They, they wear well, for lack of a better word. I found three of these pieces, and Syracuse China is a well-known restaurant wear maker, and so I went ahead and bought these, and I do have them listed, I want to say for $15 each. They're seven inch plates, so they're probably either bread or salad plates are my guess. Salad would be my, my first guest, um, guess. And so I went ahead and picked these up too. I love the atomic mid-century modern look, which is where the, what period they are from. So they are quite vintage, but very, very cool pieces there. So next up, you guys know how much I despise smoking, but these have become quite collectible. This is the insert for a standing cigarette ashtray. So this is the ashtray itself, and it would have sat in almost like a plant stand, so to speak. And here you have your, obviously, where your cigarettes and your ash would um, collect. And the rest is just this really great design. On the back, it is numbered 60-383, but I can't find a lot about that even with that number. But it does have this amazing MCM look to it. I love it. You know, even today... And I don't know how you could fashion it, but this could be like a, a tissue holder, you know, a tissue, bloop, 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 pluck your tissues. 
you can make this a men's valet. You could do a lot of things with something like this to repurpose it from its original purpose. I could even see makeup brushes here and then you could hold your makeup brushes there. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to try and find a stand that fits this so that I can actually return it to its original purpose. Well, just as a look, not for actual smoking, I hope. I would not want that to happen. Okay, so now we're going to get into something a little more boring, maybe? Or just, I don't know, simple? I found these gloves at a thrift store and they were a size small and you know I'm working on that flip house which the appraiser came out day before yesterday hopefully we will know something soon as to if the appraisal went well but I was not there but my dad was, was a stand-in for me but these fit me perfectly so I picked these up for like four bucks which is a steal they're leather and that heavy canvas these are great for not just working you know like remodeling or construction type purposes when it's cold but they're also great for loading firewood into the fireplace so pick those up uh, one more ceramic piece before I forget I found this. I believe this is the second one of these I have found. It's Shawnee. It is, of course, a planter. It is marked on the bottom. It's got this brushed gold look, uh, ribbed base here, and then, of course, that splattered pink on gray look that was ever so popular during the mid-century modern period of time. Pink inside, and this is just a wonderful, wonderful piece no chips, no cracks, nothing on the sides here of any damage whatsoever, which is very rare to find indeed. So that goes there. All right, so next up, we have these Borm Bormioli, Bormioli Rocco tumblers. They are thick but not super heavy. They have this beautiful, absolutely beautiful swirled room for them despite the fact that we remodeled our kitchen with ample storage but my husband being a pilot we have mugs and all kinds of stuff related to aviation. Let me put this up here. There you can really see the swirl and the contrast. It's so pretty. These actually go for about $35 to $50 for a set of four. So I just happen to have a set of four. So Next up is another mid-century modern ashtray. I may have shown this. I, I can't remember. I really can't find anything about this at all which is frustrating. I love the contrast. I love the splatter. Let's see if I can pull you in just a little bit more. And the color is this bright turquoise, almost robin's egg blue. It's got this kind of brown splatter with the white outline. And then they've got these um, diamond, kind of like X's in each that kind of gives it a diamond point inside. I don't lack of a better word. On the back it is covered. This was broken before I got it. And you do see a mark on the back which is this 2320 I believe. And then on the inside, okay maybe it was another one. Um, there's nothing on there. So I, I've looked this up. I've done a Google lens search. I've done my due diligence and I just cannot seem to find anything on this atomic MCM ashtray but I do like it a lot okay I find so many different things on my hauls but this piece which is um, this is Blue Mountain Canadian Pottery 
it is marked 3MP, um, no, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's a logo, Canadian Mountain Pottery. I purchased this for myself. I actually have two hound pieces and a duck or a goose piece that is just so very cool. I should have brought that up with me. But this I purchased for myself. I love that turquoise green color combined with the black and the gray and blues. And so, yeah, this is going to stay with me along with some of my other kind of mid-century modern planters uh, because I am just really, really love this piece. So Now, this next one, I don't know what I'm going to do with. You will understand my dilemma, won't you? Let's pull you in just a little bit, shall we? What we have here is a 1900s, 1895 maybe to 1900, uh, 1905 maybe, Nippon vase. Let's pull you out so you can get some better clarity here. And it is phenomenal. It's got this gold on the bottom and then it's got this kind of like moriage look to it, hand painted. The floral designs are spectacular. The greens, the blues, everything about it is superb. Superb. Even, like I said, the finished floral here on the top. The design all around the top. There is no chips, no cracks. I paid a dollar for it. It is not signed, but it has been authenticated by a Nippon expert, for lack of a better word. So I will be including that in the listing. Look even inside these indentations, the gold. Look at the detail. You cannot find stuff like this today. I love this turquoise in here the green. I mean, this is just a superb piece. I am so in love with this. I think Baxter may have just walked in. So yeah, this one's going to be going up for sale. And I suspect one of those Nippon folks will be loving it. So next up... I don't think I've shown this yet, but I, if I have, I apologize. <laughs> um, I picked this up at a Goodwill. I paid $3 for it, which I think I did, which does seem to be quite a bit of money for something like this. It could be a... Well, I was going to say it's a bank, but it's not. It is made in Japan. There we go. Japan and it does have quite a bit of condition issues as you can see it has been broken and fixed you you can't really see the repairs that much because of the the different coloration in the piece the back is very evident however I got this for myself and for very sentimental reasons. When my twin sister and I were growing up, very young, uh, we were still in diapers actually, my mother and father had a collie. This is a collie. And that collie was incredibly bright. Someone ended up stealing her, but before she left us, if we got too close to the fence, um, she would come and grab us by the diaper or whatever we would have on, but typically the diaper, and pull us back away from the fence ever so gently. She was very 
I think intuitive in terms of the fact that she was dealing with very, very small children. And, um, but she was also fiercely protective of us and would never harm a fly, I don't think, unless you came in to get her babies, which were me and my sister and my older brother. So I'm keeping her just, she reminds me, and I do vaguely remember her. I probably more so from photos that we have of her and family stories, but I can remember a sadness um, when she was gone. So I don't know, who knows, but I love everything about this piece and it was a bookend originally, I'm assuming, but that's okay. We're just going to keep it and it's going to sit I think I may have, nope, that's not a crack. And it's just going to sit and remind me of childhood memories, childhood days. All right, so next up. Now, not everything that I buy is, say, something I would like, oh, I love it. Sometimes they're just for the very simple fact that it's going to make me money. And that is the case with this and another very similar piece. These are aquatic pieces by Ice Cap. So these would be used in aquariums. And I found two of these. This was actually sealed. I took photos of it, then I opened it up just to make sure it had the right pieces in it. And it did. And I'll just open this up for you so you can see. So this is an auto control unit uh, for a aquarium and it's an auto or manual dimmer, just like a light dimmer for, you know, a lamp or something, but for your aquarium. And I found this one and then I found an electronic baluster, which I thought I had right here a minute ago, but I don't see it now. And um, these sell, I bought them each for $6. They sell anywhere from $75 to $150 a piece. So I already have, I, I listed them yesterday. I already have interest in them today. I'm hoping they sell quickly. We, of course, are closing on this. Uh, flip house and we really need to get on with it so uh, this I'm hoping like I said will move rather quickly so there's that now I want to turn um, a little bit now to some jewelry pieces some of you ask me what do you do I, I have a Facebook group that I just started that if you have I'll pull this one out for instance, earrings <clears throat> where you're missing another earring or say some type of um, a set. This is, looks like made in China, but it's really a nice piece. Um, you can list this, you can add this to the Facebook group and anybody else who does Goodwill Blue Box, if they have the matching one, then you guys can work out a deal, okay? But you ask me, what do I do with some of the stuff that these missing parts and pieces of gold and silver? Well, here we go. I'm going to show you. So this is all gold. That's gold. That's gold plated, I believe. The little shell is gold plated. Let's pull you out just a little bit. And so these are all gold pieces. Actually, I don't think those are. I think those are just ones I wanted to keep. Yeah. I don't think so. Um, <clears throat> but all of these charms, this necklace, these earrings, this is a pendant as well. It is gold and um, seed bead pearls. I don't know why I have some of these in here. 
that's a obviously a single earring there that um, newer. This is an old screw back earring that I believe is gold plated. And so anyway, going back to all the, let's pull you back out, the leftover jewelry or pieces, parts and pieces. One of these are <laughs> super, super cute. These are little gold earrings. They're actually two parts, so you can wear just the leaves or you can add the little cherries. I think those are so adorable. I actually do have the set of those, but I have them in here. I might list them if someone is interested in them, and they're so cute. Then, like I said, just different type of pieces. This is gold with a pearl on it, a gold hoop earring. Um, I wanted to show you, I went ahead and added, this is a gold necklace, and I went ahead and added that. Now remember, everything I find is in Goodwill Blue Boxes. Very rarely, every once in a while I'll get something from the an estate sale, but um, that's gold and seed bead pearls, and so I added it to this gold. I would wear that in a heartbeat. I'm not really much into gold, but here we have a, um, a charm that says shopping. And just different, you know, one, like I said, I might add some of these to the earring group. Um... Here we have a gold pen that has turquoise cabochons in there. And then we have this is a it the necklace says born to shop. It's got this little pendant on it that says born to shop. Let's see, then we have another gold necklace here, just a simple chain, and miscellaneous backs and pieces of jewelry that, like I said, are gold and don't have matches, and I'm not really sure what to do with. So, I leave them here for now until I figure out what I'm going to do. <clears throat> this is a little toe ring that is gold. It's got like waves on it. Put that back in there. I don't try, I, li I like to not move those around a lot. Now, <clears throat> this on the other hand, and this one, these are all, this is all sterling. Yowzers! So this is all sterling. Maybe around a little bit there. We have this bracelet. Uh, this was actually given to me from a wedding. Um, the wedding ended up going really sour, so I'm not going to keep it. It's monogrammed, but I can melt it down. This is a sterling silver earring. I do not have the mate to. Um, it's a pin. This is actually a sterling silver hoop earring. We have charms. We have pendants. We have earrings. We have necklaces. Um, there's another. That's a handcrafted sterling earring there. Just a little bit more. This is sterling and gold, and it's just beautiful jadeite. I suspect jadeite or um, jasper beads of some type. Let's 
let's see. This is a sterling silver and glass earring. Let's see. Here we have a sterling silver choker style necklace with dolphins on it. We do have quite a bit of earring and necklaces and earrings. Here is this may be bro no, it's not. This is actually sterling. It's very tarnished. So let's get out one of my cleaning cloths. Yeah, I'm gonna need to do a lot more than that to get that cleaned up. Here is a probably a man's necklace that I found. I almost threw it out and then I just did some more searching and it is, it, I've cleaned it up quite a bit, sterling. Let's see. Now some of these pieces, like this is an earring that I added to this piece just to see if maybe I can make it into a, a different, a new pendant because I love this earring, this handcrafted earring piece. And I find a lot of earrings that are signed that, you know, I don't want them to just, you know, go to waste because they're so gorgeous. And maybe I can send one off to the maker and have them make another one. I don't know. But this is all sterling. We have lots of, and here's another one of those. Where'd it go? There it is handmade pieces that I don't think this one was signed, but I love it. I love the unusual folks. Um, here is a silver, old silver screwback filigree earring. Boy, it's not wanting to focus, is it? There we go. Um, so all of this is, this is sterling and onyx. I need to test to see if this is garnet, silver, lots of earrings, pendants. I do have a set here though, real quick. Okay, those are mine. I don't know why they're in there. This, I love this earring. If I could find out, or maybe, oh shoot, I need to see what time it is. I have a client phone call at 11. Oh shoot, yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. Let me just reach out to her real quick and tell her. In fact, I'm going to keep that earring out because I'm going to see if she can do it. But anyway, this is all sterling. Look at this big beast. Yeah, that's all sterling. These are sterling and beautiful. Now, they were screw back, but I wanted to wear them, so I took the, the screw part off, and I just wear them as a loop, as a, um, what do you call it, a... Um, Oh, I can't think of the name. Oh well. Now this was the set that I was telling you about that matches. So we have the pendant, the earring. There's an earring. There's the pendant. And there's another earring here somewhere. I just had it. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. So we have these really pretty pressed um, flowers, I guess, and but it's all with sterling silver around it. This earring looks like it's seen better days. But anyway, all of this 
sterling and some of them have cubic zirconias or other stones in them. This actually has malachite in it. Uh, this is a beautiful old um, piece and it is a Wisner, so that's why I kept it. This is also marked WM or MW. I'm not sure what. It looks like it's some sort of equestrian type piece. Uh, maybe? I, I don't know. I mean, obviously it's broken, but... And it looks like there may have been another part to it because... This looks like, okay, so here's the top right here, and then this would have come down, and it looks like there's a, a missing piece to that, maybe, because I don't see a hole in this one. I don't think it would have gone just like that, because it's got a little doodad over here, so I don't know, but... It's the only one. It's marked. I don't know anything else about it yet. Um, that's part of the problem with some of this is you, you get into it. That's Tiger's Eye. This is Amethyst or, um, yeah, I think that's Amethyst. These, I actually have the set of these. I have the set of these. Let me take those out. That's beautiful. Let me show you this. I wish I had the set of these. Moonstone and iridescent beads to it. What is that one? Oh, there's the other one. And where's the other bird earring? This is really pretty. This is actually a turquoise piece that I might have fashioned into a pendant. Little whale here that's just cute as a button. Where is that other? I know it's in here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so birds. Here is another Native American piece that is signed. And again, I'll probably have that fashioned into a pendant. But yeah, that, so this is where all the, the jewelry that doesn't have a mate or a match, that's sterling, or I'm not really sure what I want to do with it yet, goes. Now, I have a lot more than this. This is just a tip of the iceberg. Um, yeah, this was very disappointing. I thought I had a Tiffany return to... Um, Tiffany return to Cinder. Or please return to... Yeah, that's fake. I was not happy. I think it's probably still silver, but it ticked me off that it was fake. And at A, I didn't catch it. I mean, that was, I guess, what hurt my heart the most is that I wasn't keen enough to catch it. But, that is all for today. Um, although, before I go, I do want to point out one thing. By the way, I think that is lapis, lapis there with that. Maybe sapphire, cabochon, I don't know. And yeah, so this is where all the pieces that have value, um, not, sterling and silver, not, you know, certainly not gold, or uh, not diamonds, platinum, that type of thing. Those go into a very special safe. Um, this is all brass that I will. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Are we focused? Yes, we are focused. I hope you enjoyed this haul slash what do you do with this video? Again, I have started that 
you know, lost earring or missing pieces jewelry page on my Facebook uh, page. So if you want to go join that group, just go to at Treasure Seeker WV, find it, sign up. I will add you. And then um, we're going to have some Goodwill blue boxes here very soon. And we're going to roll those out pretty quickly because I'm going to be gone at the flip house this weekend. And um, I don't have very good internet service there. So until next time, thank you so much for joining me and we will see you on the next show. Take care. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in with me. I am Sarah McDowell, your treasure seeker WV. And hey, if you would like this video, subscribe and share it with someone you think might enjoy it. See you at the next show.